Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Troy Clayton, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Warrant Officer Shane McPhee. Today marks the 65th anniversary of the Battle of Marieng Tseng during the Korean War. Shortly, we hear the story of one person who was involved in this battle and whose name now appears on the Roll of Honour. We warmly welcome Mr. Kerry Stokes, Chairman of the Council of the Australian War Memorial, and Mrs. Christine Simpson Stokes, who are joining us this evening. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We also acknowledge the members of the RSL and Services Club Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the ceremony broadcast around Australia. During the ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors, as well as students on behalf of the following schools. From Tasmania, New Norfolk High School, Queensland St Ignatius Primary School from Toowong, and from Victoria, Ascot Vale Primary and Dramana Primary School. Shortly, Australia's Federation Guard will dismount the catafalque party from the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier within the Hall of Memory. Australia's Federation Guard is the tri-service ceremonial unit of the Australian Defence Force. It provides a ceremonial presence during visits to Australia by foreign dignitaries and for civil and military events, including here at the Australian War, Memor War Memorial. Historically, a catafalque was a support for a coffin and was appointed to guard a coffin from theft or desecration. Now it performs a ceremonial role honouring the dead. Once the guard members enter the commemorative area, they will replicate the drill of the catafalque party placed around the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier.
please stand and join in singing the national anthem. You may be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where family and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection. Today we remember and pay tribute to Acting Company Sergeant Major Darcy Dudley Eccles. Darcy Eccles was born on the 6th of February 1926 in Yass, 
New South Wales. To Thomas and Gladys Eccles. Thomas was a returned soldier who had served on the Western Front during the First World War with the 30th Battalion and had been awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal and the Military Medal. Darcy grew up in Bowning and Yass and attended the Yass District High School. At the outbreak of the Second World War, his father re-enlisted for service and was posted to the 16th Garrison Battalion at Hay. The family moved to Hay and Darcy attended the Hay War Memorial High School, where he gained his intermediate school certificate. After completing his schooling, he went to work as a shop assistant in town. In 1942, his older brother, Lloyd, enlisted into the AIF. Darcy joined the Royal Australian Air Force when he turned 18, mustering as air crew. After completing his basic training, he went on to complete several other courses. However, in August 1945, with an overabundance of air crew, he discharged at his own request and joined the Army. By the time he had finished his training, the war had come to an end. He remained in the Army, serving as an instructor, and by August 1946, had been promoted to Lance Sergeant. In October, Eccles reverted to the rank of private and was posted to Japan, where he joined the 66th Infantry Battalion, part of Australia's commitment to the British Commonwealth Occupation Force in Japan. He was able to reunite with his brother, Lloyd, who was in Japan serving with the transport unit. Eccles was promoted to Sergeant in March 1947 and with the formation of the Australian Regular Army in early January 1948, he signed on for a period of six years service. As part of the new army, 66th Battalion was renamed 2nd Battalion Australian Regiment. The prefix Royal was granted the following year. He returned to Australia with his battalion in December 1948 and was sent to Puckapunyal in Victoria. Over the next year, Eccles undertook promotion courses and was involved in training new recruits. When the Korean War began in June 1950, two RAR continued to train regular Army and K-4 soldiers for service in Korea with three RAR. In June 1951, Eccles volunteered to serve in Korea. He flew out of Sydney in early July and after a brief stop in Japan, joined three RAR in Korea. Eccles was posted to B Company where he was made Acting Company Sergeant Major. The next two months were relatively quiet for 3RR, but at the end of September, the battalion was told of an impending operation known as Commando. After all the planning had been completed, 3RR moved into their attack positions on the 2nd of October. In the early hours of the 3rd of October, B Company advanced through heavy mist to the first objective, Hill 199. After a short fight with the enemy, the hill was captured by the Australians. The company then went into reserve. B Company led off again in the mist on the 5th of August for the initial phase of the attack on Marianne Sang. With navigation proving difficult, the company missed its intended turn off and instead moved on to a nearby Chinese held feature, which was captured after a brief skirmish. The Australians captured Marion San by late afternoon on the 5th of October. The following day, 3RR captured a nearby feature called Sierra. B Company was again called on to capture the next feature, known as the Hinge. At 8am on the 7th of October, B Company began their advance towards the Hinge. The advance went well, but as the Australians neared the Hinge, the Chinese launched a surprise attack on headquarters company. The ensuing engagement, Eccles was wounded in the neck. He was taken by stretcher to the regimental aid post, but due to the severity of his wounds, Eccles was loaded aboard a helicopter along with another wounded Australian for transfer to a nearby hospital. Sadly, Eccles' wounds were too severe and he died during the flight. He was 25 years old. Company Sergeant Major Darcy Dudley Eccles was laid to rest at the UN Military Cemetery in Tanok on the 12th of October, but was later reinterred 
in the United Nations Memorial Cemetery at Busan. His name is listed here on the Roll of Honour on my right. Among the 340 soldiers, sailors and airmen who died during the Korean War. This is but one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Acting Company Sergeant Major Darcy Dudley Eccles, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub of Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes this evening's last post ceremony. For those of you attending this evening's Afghanistan DVD launch, please follow the outside of the building around to your right to find the Captain Reg Saunders Gallery. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>